Hey everybody, it's Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com and I'm looking at Orleans and one of the most popular patterns, the Smart Cash. All right, so the Orleans Smart Cash pattern, what is it good for? Why would you want to use it? Let's just talk about that briefly and then we'll jump into the implementation. So I have a blog post related to this. The link will be in the description. Uh, but the gist of it is, like any cache, you want to be potentially hitting it because Orlean is in, Orlean's grains are in memory uh, distributed instead of hitting your persistent storage, whether that be SQL Server, some other relational database, or even a NoSQL database, which is probably more likely. This really fits well when you are using a document store because you would be fetching out um, just the actual documents themselves rather than having to do mapping. But again, it's really just about not having to hit your permanent storage. So the gist of it is that because your grains are in memory, you're hitting your grain to or getting your grain out and returning the values of that, which is going to be much quicker than actually hitting your permanent storage. The benefit here with Orleans is that you're also using that same grain to change state. So now you have an immediately consistent cache and you don't have ever have to worry about it um, the delay between it updating or how to invalidate the cache. So let's jump into how you actually implement this. All right, so I'm in Visual Studio, and this is my Practical Orleans project. Um, you can find it on GitHub. Again, if you go to that link to the, the blog post series, you'll be able to get to it here. Um, but the first thing really is just creating um, this first interface that I called iState Grain Holder of T, and it is going to be implementing the uh, Orleans uh, iGrain with key, uh, good key. We're just going to have two methods on it, which are about getting the item and setting the item. Now, T here is actually going to be our state object, our POCO likely, that we're actually going to have. Then we're going to create um, our class called state holder, which is really just going to hold the actual value. Um, so it's pretty straightforward in the default value of T uh, if we don't pass it. And then I'm going to have an abstract class um, that's going to be our grain, that's going to have the state holder, and that, uh, that's also going to implement that interface for getting and setting our item. So this is kind of the infrastructure code that we'll have. Um, again, these basically this interface, our state holder class, and our abstract um, state holder grain. So to actually go ahead and implement this, I've created um, a really simple example, which is the Popoco here called customer state, which has our ID of a GUID and just the name. So nothing too complicated here. And then because every grain needs an interface um, that our application code is actually going to use, I'm creating an iCustomer grain. And this is implementing our iState grain holder. And like I said, T for this is actually going to be our state, our Poco here of customer state. And then lastly, every grain needs to have a concrete class that Orleans actually executes and runs. And that's going to extend our abstract class that we created. And again, T here is our actual state. And because we need to reference our interface uh, for Orleans, that's here as well. So the storage provider here, this is where it's actually stored at. I'm just using um, in-memory storage, which is related to this provider name in my configuration. So this is what you would need to do for every piece of state that you want to have in a green using kind of our infrastructure code. And then this is how you actually go about using it. So I have two methods here in this customer state service, one for creating a customer and one for getting a customer. And this is what this would typically look like um, when you're using Orleans is I have my cluster client I'm fetching out this particular grain based off the ID. And now what I'm going to be doing is because I'm getting um, our customer grain and it has the set item, get item, I'm going to basically put our data, our state, into that holder. And then the same thing for customer, once I actually get our customer back out from our grain, I'm going to call get item to actually just return our customer state. So you can see we're using Orleans, we're kind of using a holder to actually just store our POCO state objects. And it's just a simple way of being able to hold that data in memory in a grain. So now if I jump over to, we have a, a Botman module here in ASP.NET Core, 
And just to show off the, the service itself, I have my customer state service, get customer, where I'm gonna be basically taking the um, GUID in the URI and then just returning that customer. This will basically get serialized to JSON. And then the same thing for a post here to create a customer. I'm gonna be creating a new GUID for the customer ID, creating our new customer, and then just adding some location information to redirect back to the uh, to this get endpoint. So let me jump in Postman and I'll show you how this works. All right, so I'm running our project and I have our ASP.NET Core web application running, and that started up. And here I have our silo running that's hosting our grains. So if I jump over to Postman, um, what I can do is make a post call to create a customer. So if I went to customers, and I simply just need to make a, a post call, there's no data that I need to send. If we look at the header, I was returning a location of our new customer that we created. So I'm just going to copy this. Now let's make a get call to that endpoint. And I'm going to specify an accept of application JSON. And we can see that we're getting this request back. Now what's interesting here is we can see the length of time that it took to actually get this request. But subsequently, now that this is in memory, this call will get substantially less than from the original request because now I'm just returning it from memory. So I'm hovering anywhere from 15 milliseconds or 14 to 30, uh, 43. So subsequent requests are obviously much faster. I didn't add any methods uh, to change the state, but if we were, we'd be using that green. And like I said, subsequent calls to fetch the state would be just as quick as they are now because it's immediately consistent within our grain. Um, so that's how you use probably, from what I hear, the most popular pattern uh, with Orleans is the smart cache. If you'd enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more .NET related videos. Thank you.